We've contracted out the trade bell today. Sam Edmonds having the week off. Fox Footy senior AFL reporter Tom Morris has accepted the invitation. This is not my space. When I dabble, I tend to meddle. It's much better to have those who know what they're talking about. Tom, great to have you on board. Jared, it's great to be here. Sam Edmonds does such a good job, and it gives me shivers when I hear this trade bell yeah. most mornings, but it's good to fill in for him. Uh, so we've got some great suggestions. Some new, <clears> and <throat> some are after a second opinion. Some are unsatisfied with... With Sam's input on a couple of these, they want to run a pu- so. I'll give you an example. Yeah. All right. As soon as we ring the trade bell, we get Tom Green to Richmond <laughs> or Tom Green to Richmond. Either a question mark or an excla- exclamation mark. Sam's a bit unsure about that one. What are, What have you got to offer on Tom Green to Richmond? Well. I'm only as sure as what people tell me, and that is that he won't be going to Richmond. <laughs> you can't be certain, but he's contracted. The Giants aren't going to let him go. Uh, he's staying at the Giants. <laughs> Bless those who text it through every time. It does It does provide a smile. Now, a couple of veterans as yes. we get started here. Scott Pendlebury as a starting point. Yeah, so there's been a shift from Collingwood, so they're prepared to offer him two years now, which is what he wanted. And people I speak to believe that's a formality. And the same for Jack Zebel at North Melbourne, who wanted two years. The initial offer was one year. They've now offered two years, so I think that's going to get done as well. So good news for North fans and Collingwood fans that wanted to keep those two players. Damien Hardwick was with us on 360 last night. I really did like his approach to the Callum Coleman-Jones scenario. Damien Hardwick being able to have a laugh about Coleman-Jones is great, and Jack Rewalt did it as well with you last week. I think they understand as much as they'd love to keep him, he's going to North Melbourne. That four-year deal is on the table. We know Gold Coast are offering five years. They'll have to work out a trade. But what this means for other key forwards that are around the market is very interesting. It means Sam Wiedemann probably doesn't have a suitor because North Melbourne's gone for Coleman Jones. It means Gold Coast isn't a suitor for Sam Wiedemann because they've gone for Marby or Chole. And Rory Lobb is sort of in limbo in some ways, even though he's contracted at Freo for another two years. So what North Melbourne and Gold Coast have done has a flow on effect for other key forwards looking for a new home. So it was interesting that, so it was facetiously said, pick one, but Richmond wants something proper from Coleman Jones, who they, they've they always had a big opinion of and, and are quite, while understandable, they are disappointed to be losing. That's right. And what he's worth is in the eye of the beholder. Clearly, they're not going to get pick one, but North Melbourne would want to offer more than pick 20, I think, for Richmond, even if it is pick 20 and then something else down the track. I think Richmond clearly won another first round pick. They've got a great draft hand already, mm. the Tigers. Um, the Jack Higgins trade last year worked for them. Although Chole might be cancelled out with Robbie Tarrant, so they don't get the free agency compensation. They're in a really good position, the Tigers, to rebuild quickly and have another go next year with maybe four or five top 25 picks in this year's draft. Question from the text. Are the Tigers 100% out of the race for Chera? Only, uh, well, they're as far out of the race as I think any other club are as far out of the race. So you can't say 100% because there can always be a late change. But my understanding with Chera is that Carlton is still the club. And that's because Melbourne can't get him done. I can't imagine, Jared, a situation where Robbie DiRazio and Paul Connors, his managers, uh, allow him to nominate a club that he can't get to. Yep. He will nominate a club he can get to, and at the moment that's Carlton. Even though Melbourne has had a serious crack, there's no draft picks they can offer. Even next year's first-round pick will likely be in the teens based on this year's form, and they're not going to be giving Luke Jackson or any players up either. So the question that comes as a follow-up on Coleman Jones is, could North walk him to the preseason draft? Theoretically, yes. And that's what happened last year with Jackson Haitley, and Adelaide and GWS. In the end, the two parties couldn't come to an arrangement and the Giants thought it was more important to stick a flag in the ground and make a statement than it was to get a third rounder back for Jackson Haitley. So they allowed him to go. I think Coleman Jones is probably has probably got a higher ceiling than Jackson Haitley, so I think they'll be less keen to do that, but it's still an option for North Melbourne as probably not bad bargaining power. Frank's raised a name that I know is on your list today. Where's Jake Riccardi going? And <laughs> it, it, there's a kicker to this from Frank. To the Bombers, right? Well, the Bombers was the rumour, but I think he's going to sign a two-year deal at GWS. It's been on the table. That's what they're working towards. It's not official yet. I think Matthew Flynn will also sign a two-year deal at the Giants. And I checked in with the Giants this morning regarding Shane Mumford because there's still been no... Uh, retirement yes, announcement, yeah, yeah. and we think he's going to retire. We think it's highly likely, but it's not 100% certain yet. So there is still a very small possibility that Shane Mumford plays on, albeit uh, pretty minor, and that would be amazing if he does. <laughs> very good. Um, now, there's a simple swap here. We, 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 
we like four leggers and five leggers. It's like our multis. <laughs> I Tom, lost, the, I the lost my multi. You got me yeah, on, Jared. No, apologies for that. <laughs> Gavin in Glenelg has got a straightforward. I see Laddams to the Giants and Finlayson to Port as a fair and beneficial swap for both parties. That is an interesting one. Uh, the, if I can just talk about Peter Laddams for one moment. Now, last year, the Sydney Swans wanted Peter Laddams and Port Adelaide said no. This year, Port Adelaide have put him on the trade table. And I think that is a nice tactic from Port Adelaide to show the Sydney Swans and all, and also show Jordan Dawson that they can get a trade done with a player involved as well. So they're offering up Laddams saying, hey, you wanted him last year. Can we go again this year? And there we go, Jordan Dawson. We can get you to the club without having to give up um, too much in terms of draft picks. I think that is smart play from Port Adelaide. We know that Peter Laddams is contracted, yep. but we also know the Swans were keen on him last year. So it has a fair bit of symmetry. Yeah, yeah. That's There's always an underlying principle mm. at play, isn't there? Good. The Took Miller scenario at Gold Coast. What do you know on that front? So he's contracted for next year. And Took Miller is uh, fundamentally a Gold Coast player for life. He said as much. He said as much privately and publicly. He wants to be at the Suns forever. And I think that is a huge testament to him as a person. He's had a great year, all Australian, the best and fairest as well. Um, but he's out of contract at the end of next year and discussions have been ongoing for about four or five months regarding extending him for about four or five years, maybe six years as well, M more likely four or five years. And he wants about 850 to 880 a year. That high 800 is what his management's asking for, which I don't think you can argue that that's not fair given how important he is to the Suns and his and his loyalty. But the Suns at the moment are offering about $750,000. So there's a bit of an impasse. I, that, that will get resolved. He'll re-sign. But it just gives you an indication that, that at the to and fro for these really good players at clubs like the Gold Coast Suns that deserve good money. But the Suns also have in the back of their head, well, next year they want to keep Jack Lacocious. Next year they want to keep Isaac Rankin and Ben King. So they can't be offering Tuke Miller everything because then that might ruin their list build elsewhere. So he's going to re-sign, but there's still a bit of a gap at the moment. Will North chase Daniel Talia now that Tarrant has requested a trade and Talia's only 29 or 30? That's Andrew in Whittlesea. Not that I'm aware of for North Melbourne and Daniel Talia. I, my information about Daniel Talia is there would be interest from elsewhere, but he's more likely to stay in South Australia because his partner has a job that is well-paying um, and a new job, and he potentially has career opportunities outside of football that would set him up for the rest of his life. So although if although he would be uh, wanted at another club, it might be the best thing for him to do for the next phase of his life to actually stay in South Australia and retire from football. That's okay. how it looks at the moment. Yep, yep, right. Luke Dunstan last night was on Sports Day. It really um, a, a revealing interview. So he had a great night at the Brownlow, and we – remarked yesterday morning, the backdrop is that he's not wanted at the Saints. And he put a bit of detail around how that's unfolded. At times, certain coaches and that get opinions of, of players. And, and once you know they have opinions, it's pretty hard to change them. So, Did you not feel a part of something at the Saints? Did you not get on with Rats? Did he not rate you? Oh, I wouldn't say I didn't get on with him. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a good fella. And I, I just think... Yeah, I, I don't. I think it's pretty clear that he, he didn't rate me, which is fine. That's what I said. It's it's hard to change opinions of coaches, and, and that that's that's footy. So I'm not holding that against anyone. But yeah, as I said, I think I just need a fresh fresh start and a bit more, you know, clean slate, and I'll, I'll sort of find a bit more motivation. Who might believe in Luke Dunstan? I think Essendon is the club that might believe in it, Luke Dunstan. This is still very early. I'm not saying that there's even been a formal approach, but Essendon has told player managers in the past couple of months they're after an inside midfielder. Luke Dunstan comes cheap. He got 11 Brownlow votes. Just on his time at St Kilda, Brett Ra he, he sought clarity before the start of the season. Am I in your plans? Brett Ratton said no. You're not in our best team. We don't think you're going to play senior football this year. He played some VFL footy. He got in the team. He finished really well, although he got dropped for the last game of the season. I think there's no doubt that Luke Dunstan can play, but there is, as we've spoken about before, and Sam Edmund has spoken about as well, there is an abundance of inside midfielders that are looking for new homes that pre-COVID would have been able to find it, but post-COVID with list spots tight and not much money, it's a lot harder for this sort of player to find a new home. The Gold Coast Suns have some interest in Luke Dunstan, maybe as a rookie, but I think Essendon is the club that is most he's most likely to get to if he's going to get to another club at all. Okay. Uh, this had come through. Could you please ask Tom, why would Narkel only sign for one year, given his age and promise? Wouldn't the Cats have liked to lock him away for three, if not four? That's Gurav. Well, the Cats may have wanted to, but I think 
uh, Narkel is keeping his options open. If he has another year where he can't quite break into the team, then his manager, Ralph Carr, and him will be looking elsewhere, as they did this year, it must be said. So I think this is almost like a last chance saloon for the Cats to prove to Narkel that they want to keep him, but also Narkel to prove to the Cats that he's good enough to be in their best 23. You wrote a story about Jordan Clark on the weekend while we were doing crunch time. In fact, that landed. What, what's the latest on Clark? Yeah, so he had a meeting with Justin Longmuir and Fremantle last Wednesday. He's in Perth. He's a, he's a Western Australian, and he was there, obviously, for Long's um, finals campaign. And there's an expectation now from the Cats and also from Clark's camp that there will be discussion this week that will explore a, pot- a possible trade. It doesn't mean he's going to walk in there and bang his hand on the table and say, I want a trade. It doesn't mean Geelong's going to say, you need to get out and look for a trade because he's got another year in his contract. But I think there's going to be a mature discussion in which a trade is explored and Fremantle is the logical home for him. Thanks for <laughs> accepting the trade bell invitation. Well, I think you're unscathed as you oh, leave. God, I'm a bit nervous. We'll see, we'll see how we go. I, I know, uh, I certainly feel like Sam does a great job, but if I can do half the job he does, then I'll be happy.